I am here with an old friend, the legendary John Bon Jovi. Um, he's got a new 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 record dropping, new album forever drops June seventh. I just finished um, "Thank You, Good Night," the Bon Jovi story on Hulu, which was fantastic. It was a w- good six hours of my life. I enjoyed it. I, I, I actually I loved it. We're going to talk a lot about it. I was it's kind of blown away. And it re- really touched a lot of nerves. Um, he's a co-founder with his son Jesse of Hampton Water Rose Wine. We're going to talk about um, his charities, also his Soul Kitchen, and a bunch of other stuff. Thanks for being here, my friend. Great to see you, Donnie. Thank you very much. I, I was really blown away by the, the, there are a few things that really touched me in the, in the documentary that it was, I related to it just on a personal level as a guy kind of, we're I'm a few years older than you, but trying to still do what we do and, but want to be at our best. It was such an interesting, and it was interesting. I, I ended up in it somehow interviewing you in 17, 18 years ago. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, 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 that's right. You are in it prophetically say, you know, you're going to be doing this in your early 60s. I'm going to be watching you do it. And you said at the time, you said, well, you know, I I think so. I don't know. You know, I don't know if I'll be selling this money, but I'm going to still be doing it. And it was just, it was, it was really what moved me the most was how consistent you were to just being your best from the time you were. The, I remember when, when they, when the, when one of the instructors said to you, you don't have it. You said, yes, I do. I got it. I got what it takes. Don't tell me I don't have what it takes. And that, it's pretty much been the theme throughout. It is true. Look, you know, I was never the best at anything. I was just the hardest working. And um, and the, the drive was always there because, well, it was probably given to me by my upbringing, but compounded by the fact that I was very young when I started this journey. And, and when you're that young, naivete can take you, you know, a yeah. long way in, in those initial steps because they make the impossible seem, of course I can do that, very possible. You know, you're fearless at a young age. So that compounded by a hard work ethic got me in the door and then it you was were, about, you know, doing it again. You, you obviously, as an artist, the talent was there and obviously, as you said, the hard work was there. The shrewdness was also there, and it, it 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 popped up at so many different times during the documentary. One one of the early ones that hit me when you just done Runaway, and you, and all of a sudden you go, wait a second, there are guys sitting alone in a room, they got no one to talk to. I'm going to go up and I'm going to sit in front of the DJ and put it. And that was that was kind of the earlier springboard, and that was a businessman, that was a new business effort, and that happened a lot. We'll talk more that happened throughout your career, but you built an enterprise. Not all artists do that, and it, and it was and that kept coming through throughout. It was the John Bon Jovi enterprise. I could have been watching a documentary about the building of Apple, the same way I was watching the documentary of an artist building his career. That, that's what really, really took, kind of really hit me. Well, thanks. I mean, one of the working titles for this last album was actually Bon Jovi Inc., but no right. one got the inside joke but me. Right. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> You know, nowadays I see more artists becoming that shrewd, which I'm encouraged by because they had to. You know, a kid is not going to go see a DJ in 2024 and take a cassette tape. These days, unfortunately, a kid has to go with how many social media likes he has. And it's like the song becomes secondary to the record company. But on the other hand, you know, whether it was the hip hop community or the pop stars like Taylor Swift, who are very shrewd and, and they created masterful, you know, enterprises that are college courses now, for God's sake. I was just doing it in a different time and place. The shrewdness also showed when um, Slippery When Wet, which obviously was uh, kind of the, the breakthrough that the authenticity of you not saying, no, you're not going to tell me to shoot a video of me on a beach talking to some woman. They're going to show us, we're going to, we're going to watch us play. And yeah. we live are what we're selling and the authenticity of that. And you understood, you understood when not to listen to people and just to listen to your gut. You know, initially when you're a kid, it's hard enough to learn to play your instrument, write a song. Then suddenly you're thrust into a record company situation where they say, you're the boss now, make a decision about a video. And you go, video? What the hell does this have to do with anything? So, of course, you're going to stumble, which we did. Um, but by the third record, I really did get that right. And I'm 
you have to think to yourself, well, who are we? What are we? We are a great live rock and roll band. Let us show that and sell that. Let us magnify that as a matter of fact, you know, make it bigger than, than it really was. It was a bit of a PT Barnum trick. The arch throughout the arc throughout the, the, series is you as i said wanting to maintain your excellence understanding your aging as we all do and you kept using the words and i i found these fascinating a hundred percent of eighty percent is not going to be good enough for me so what you were saying is no matter what i do i'm going to give a hundred percent but if i can't do a hundred percent of a hundred percent and i was kind of like wait a second don't we get to at a certain point of time say no but as long as it's a hundred percent of x that's all we can expect of ourselves. And even if your voice is 5% off because you're no longer 20, you're 60, isn't that good enough? But to you, the answer is no. No, for me, the answer is no. Legacy matters. And I'm not pretending to be a young man. Uh, I, I'm 62 years old. My hair went gray 11, 12 years ago. I didn't sit around dying it. I haven't had any fillers or Botox or you any both, right, surgeries. Right. Um so I'm, I'm not afraid to be who I am, but if I can't be Tom Brady, I'm not going to be the backup to the backup. Yeah. You know, I, I'm good with what I've done. I'd rather walk away than take a backup role, if that makes any sense to you. Yeah. You know, as an analogy, I, I'm just not willing. So a, a kind of a, a emotional moment, you, you have surgery on your vocal cords. And all of the emotion and challenge that come with that. And in the final scene, you're kind of testing it out for the first time, really opening up and taking it out for like really putting going to zero to 60. And just the joy you feel when you realize you don't know my tool, my tool, you call it my tool, my tools are still there. They're still in the toolbox. You're coming that was, back. That was pretty, you know, it's yeah. a work in progress. There's nothing there that's, um, screaming perfection nor do i ever intend to reach perfection but in the pursuit of excellence um, i'm well on the road to recovery um not quite there yet to be honest but working on it every day um it's good to know that the the surgeon i trusted my livelihood to delivered on the promise because even doctors aren't god they're doctors no. Yeah, no, that, and you look pretty ballsy going in that day. I mean, I'm saying to myself as I'm watching it, this is not just a guy going in for surgery. This is like you're putting your complete sense of who you are on the line. And drove you were kind of. Myself, drove myself to Philadelphia to the hospital, got yeah. in my car and drove myself. I was like, bring it on. Shank yeah. me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Two times you got emotional in, in the doc. One time, and this goes back to you being a businessman and a leader, you talked about when I tell my people, guys, follow me, trust me, I got to know I can deliver. And that showed such, that's just showed the leadership that is like, that was as much to you as the performing, your ability to get people to trust you and follow you. And that when you tell someone to follow you, what that means to you. You know, you, there's a difference between being a boss and being a leader. Bosses sit there and boss you around and tell you, you know, they yell and they yap and leaders lead and leaders lead by example and leaders lead because they work hard and then other people see them doing that and they want to deliver for that leader. They want to participate in that dream together. I have such an immense adoration for the band that are with me and even the ones that are no longer with me because they bought into it. And especially the ones who today, tonight, when I see them again, um, are still there because imagine having somebody give their life to you, their entire career is in the palm of your hand. And, you know, for Tico or Dave who've been there since day one, uh, even though it worked out, my incredible adoration for them, I'll take it to my grave. I always said being a great leader in business, the way people follow you, if you care about their success as much as your own, people will walk through fire. And they knew that. And they, they, they felt that it was a mutual win. And they, throughout the documentary, talk about 
what you, you just said what they meant to your life and they were saying the same thing, what you meant to their life. And that's leadership and that's brotherhood. And the other thing, the other interesting analogy I made about a business in there is that and throughout the doc, obviously some band members come and go, obviously famously Richie, but like a business, I always say it lives within the walls that you could change 80%, obviously not you, but if there's a culture, if there's an ethos, there's a way of doing things, the parts, not to minimize the parts, but they can be interchangeable. And that's what was really demonstrated also in the doc. It's look, everybody's contributions are the reason I get to talk to you today. So I'm not belittling anyone along the way. And I'm grateful for Alec, John Such, who has passed away, and Richie, who was in the band and left us 11 years ago. But I'm grateful for every moment that they were in the band. But if you were, you know, a businessman and had to bet money on the future of the band, Donnie Deutsch would have bet money on the future of the band because he knows who's running the, the show. Yeah. And I don't, I never would have doubted that for a minute. I, I'm sorry, but the band was obviously going to go on, you know, yeah. and just, just as big as ever. The other time you got emotional, Doc, and it was, it, I was curious why at that moment you're listening to Living on a Prayer later, later on, obviously, you know, fairly recently. And you just, and whoever, I forgot who was sitting with you. I don't know if, uh, whoever, uh, I, I forgot, but they basically said to you, like, this fucking song, man, you know, this is, this, this, everybody sings this. This is, and you like, go, I I co-wrote that. Like this, that's when your legacy hit you that you kind of, I think you realized all of your work, but that piece in particular, that will live on in culture in a way that very few things do. And some things in the art push through and that one, that one a hundred years from now, a hundred, People will be singing to no, because or fifty, whatever, whatever the time. If you, we we think about White Christmas, or we think about things that enter into the culture, and it's more yeah. than a song. It's a it's a it's a thing, and you got really choked up. To have had only one of those would be the greatest gift ever. We've had several, and you know, billion streamed songs and billion videoed songs. That it's crazy because I've had four or five of them now. Um, Living on a Prayer will outlive absolutely. And in my obituary, it will say he co wrote that song. Um, Magic, absolutely magic. We didn't know, we had no clue. And as you said, you had six, seven, eight of them, you had three of them on one album. I I mean, it's just incredible. And I love the story of the cover of Slippery When Wet. When you, well, why don't you tell the story? Because it's really, it's, it's well, sort of the, genius. Well, the truth, it was at a time before the internet. And so uh, we were in Vancouver recording the record. The working title was Wanted, Dead or Alive. We all grew beards and mustaches and wore dusters. And the record company uh, head of PR, a young lady, came up and she just, almost like the mom, grabbed us by, you know, grabbing you by the ear and say, go shave that damn beard off. You know, you're 25, <laughs> you're supposed to be cute. Um, Album title gets changed to Slippery When Wet. We take a, 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 a flyer on a photographer who shoots a girl from the her bottom of her nose to the top of her abdomen. And as you can imagine, the cropping of it was too much to begin with. Um, when they sent me a Xerox back in those days, as you'll remember, it was really just varying tones of blue. So there was no differential in the color. And I said, wait a minute, first of all, forget this cropping. I don't understand this photograph. Second, by the way, what color is this album cover? They said it's hot pink to match her lipstick. I went, this is career suicide. I said, Who, whose <laughs> idea is cover, right. this? You know, and um, so they said, well, we're in trouble because we've printed 500,000 of them. The single is on the radio. We need an album cover. So I went into a photo studio with the same photographer, we squirted a black hefty garbage bag with water and said, that's it, slippery when wet. And then it, it just looked like the universe. It looked like stars in the sky. So I took my fingers and I wrote slippery when wet, took another photograph. I said, that's your album cover. And my attitude was it worked for back in black. Screw it. This is your album cover because I refused to have that girl and, you know, and 
her body on the on the front of the album cover, I just thought it would be career suicide. Well, and I let the, the music do the talking. The, the music certainly did talk. Hey, let's shift gears a little bit. Let's talk about your business uh, with your son, Hampton Water. Actually, I'm going to be interviewing you, talking to you about it next week. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, talk to me about the business, state of the business, and how, how about working with Jesse. Um, my son, Jesse, um, came up with this incredible concept while he was still at the University of Notre Dame. And um, we have a house in the Hamptons in Eastern New York. And um, one night, very late, I offered him a glass of what I used to refer to as pink juice. And he said, we don't call it pink juice anymore. We call it Hampton water. And as a marketeer, my head almost fell off my shoulders. So that's a great idea. He then expounded on it, woke up the next morning, was serious about it. I was like drinking the night before, so I'd forgotten about it. And I said, okay, what? Come back with a business plan from school. If you're serious, if it's good, I would know who to call. So we had a concept. He developed the bottle, the label. Uh, he, he expounded upon the name. We got the clearance, which was not easy because, as you well know, the Hamptons is a um, viticultural area. Yeah. So uh, unbeknownst to us, that meant you had to have 85% of Long Island grapes which was, you know, with all respect to Long Island's grapes, it was not our, our idea. Um, we figured that out in a brilliant piece of marketing um, with the name Hampton Water, not Hamptons, because that is the viticultural area. And if you look really close at the label, and you'll understand this, the O is a raindrop. Therefore, nice. the LLC and the, the right, IP, right, right. H-A-M-P-T-N. One of one, we win. So now we've got a lifestyle brand. We started it um, eight years ago. This is the seventh vintage. There is only one rosé ever that has had four 90-point ratings consecutively. That would be us, not Miraval, not Whispering Angel, not even Dominat. Wow. So we're still rising, obviously. We're nowhere near as old as Miraval, Dominat, Whispering Angel. They're a decade older. But we're the number three premium rosé in, in America. and um, that's, a, that's insane. That's crazy. Killing Absolutely that's killing it. He's in all 50 states and 50 countries abroad. Um, all credit to my son. That's right. So you must be pretty damn proud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His work ethic is... Uh, is admirable and uh and he's I wonder, doing... I wonder where i wonder where he gets that from yeah yeah <laughs> well he wasn't adopted let's put it that way <laughs> and you're also a new father-in-law twice over jesse uh has gotten married uh, in a civil service and now the big one's coming in a couple of weeks and jake and millie were just recently married as well so two of my three are uh done one is engaged and one is still too young as you know you know romeo my youngest yes i, I my daughter used to have a crush on him right. how's he doing man how's he doing <laughs> he's at the university of miami uh, as an aspiring songwriter Good so he's my favorite right now all right i got, I got you i love that all right let's also talk a little, little bit about soul kitchen i you one thing about you you've always been known as somebody who gives back you, you 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 never and this also comes through throughout the doc that you kind of know where you came from and you both, you and Dorothy are very explicit about you're supposed to give back. That's, that's not even, it shouldn't even be a question. It should be a question if you don't. So talk to me about now you've got four of them. Yeah. Some 20 years ago, I used to own uh, what was called an arena football team. I remember and that. Again, you know, the way I think about going to see a DJ, I thought, how are we going to win in Philadelphia when you've got the Eagles, Flyers, Sixers uh, and Phillies? And I thought we need to be very philanthropic. And long story short, we eventually found the homeless and the hunger issue because I realized you didn't need a scientist to find the cure. So we started to build row homes and then affordable housing. When the economic downturn of 08 kicked in, Dorothea conceptualized what became the Soul Kitchen. It's a pay it forward model. So if you or I want to directly affect change, you go, you leave a, a suggested donation, which will get you a three course, beautiful meal and in a very nice bistro setting. We take no government subsidies. There's no institutionalized food. It's all farm to table. And those who are volunteering are empowered. 
And that's a big part of this. Yeah. Because if you or I were to go there and you don't volunteer in some way, you sort of feel like you're missing out like on an part. Ad, yeah, yeah, you feel like a schmuck, actually. Yeah. And you never know who is there in need or there like you or, or I could be to affect that change because people are taking part in this model and you're meeting your neighbors because fear of the unknown. And especially in a situation like this, people who don't know this kind of a setting, I have had people come to me and say, um, I don't want to sit with a homeless person. And you go, Jesus. okay. Right. And you explain to them and they say, um, is there booze there? And I say, no, we're trying to feed people. You know? So you would get the craziest reasons why the locals wouldn't come and always want to give you a check. And I said, your money would be appreciated, but I don't need or want it. Come and participate in the model and meet your neighbors. So whether it was the economic downturn of 08 or then again in COVID, these were the hardworking people that are your neighbor. Think of the bus driver, the limo driver, the restaurateur, all the people who were out of work and living paycheck to paycheck. We were still feeding them. We were just having to do takeout. You couldn't come in. And I was back behind the sink washing dishes again because there could be no volunteers. So... We've done that now for some, I don't know, 13, 14 years. We now have four of them. Whether or not you think, wow, bravo, you know, you did something nice with the kitchens. When we got to the one that was number three, Donnie, and, and we went to universities and we, and we went to Rutgers at, at, at Newark. And we said to the chancellor, you have an issue here with kids on campus that can't make ends meet. And eating ramen sounds all sexy and cute. But when it's out of necessity every day, because you don't have money, the chancellor, she embraced it, thank goodness. Wow. We took their food pantry, continued it as a, a volunteer opportunity for their students who are now eating in the soul kitchens. So then we did a fourth one at a university. So people's minds were blown. They go, wait a minute, I'm giving my kid money for tuition at a major university, and he doesn't have enough money to eat. Yes, that happens a lot. And so, you know, we have now four of them. That's amazing. Good for you, man. Good for you. The Shift of Forever. Talk to me about the, the new album. New album's pretty great. Um, the reception to it has been over the moon. Um, I think that between the film and now the record, there'll be an incredible resurgence. So my hopefully being healthy enough to tour by next year, um, there's going to be kids that are going to see us for the first time 40 years in. But... The first single, Legendary, is a smash hit record on the radio in multiple formats. And it, you have to chuckle. I mean, yeah, I'm I, on the same chart as Taylor Swift and Ice Spice. I, <laughs> I, I would not think that that would even be, I mean, it's, it's, that's quite a feat. That is really fucking incredible. I didn't, you know, and that comes with experience too. When you can get to a place to say, I don't care to be on the chart with, blah, blah, blah. That's when you're going to be on the chart with chart. Them. Yeah. You know, because yeah. you just write something pure of heart and people will find the message to be their own. You talked about touring. What's the, what's the game plan at this point? One day at a time. Um, yeah. In truth, um, I'm getting very close. What you saw in the film was shot one in two years ago. Now the yes. yeah. two years ago this month. So I'm well on the road to recovery. Uh, I have performed a couple of songs here and there now, three different times, but I haven't, I haven't felt the confidence to go and blow out a couple hours yet uh, in public, just in private. But even today, you know, I had vocal therapy and I did my my thing, and and it's coming along. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'll be first in line, man. I promise you. I one one thing that blew me away also, and I've known you almost twenty years, and you. are Feet have always really been on the ground. And watching the doc and seeing the, for hour and hour and hour, this mass adulation, yet you always kept it where it belonged. You know, I mean, you never did drugs. You never did like, I'm, I'm not like, like, whereas I was picturing myself in, in that and 
how do you you always kept it together did you was there a, like a thing did you have a like okay that's there i'm here cuz anybody would lose their mind and you never you kind of were on this trajectory and you kept going 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 and you almost were i don't want to say in on the joke but you kind of saw it for what it was that was my takeaway yeah, I wouldn't ever have considered it to be in on the joke because it was something that, A, as a little boy, you dreamt of, B, you know. Not, not that, joke, understood what, like, kind of just understood I, what I, it I was. Understand what you're saying, you know, but on, on what it was, perhaps, because, you know, my heroes didn't behave that way either. And I just was always very cognizant of I had to wake up tomorrow and do it. So I just, I never had a, a taste for excessive drug use. And I, I never, so I never did any of it. Um, you know, I like a bottle of wine and that's, then I'm very happy. That's about as far as I need to go. The rest of it, it was like, I just want to do it again. I want to get up on stage and write another song again. He, he, I, otherwise I knew, me, I know too many guys on the, where are they now pile? And I'm, I just was never interested. In that. The other thing that uh, was always hit me, there was so many shots. It was beautifully done. And, and Gotham Chopra did did a great. Yeah, uh, I mean, I was thinking about the amount of work that must have went into that because a couple it, years. Just, yeah, without question. But when you see the perspective, when you're playing Wembley, you're playing any eighty thousand, sir. And what it as best as you can describe what it feels like. You, you said at one point on, you just kind of go to another place. You you lose yourself in. It. But when there are eighty thousand humans just screaming for you, and that you are like giving them juice. What's the, like, what does that feel like up there? I, it's kind of a goofy question, but that, that was hitting me also. There is a, a part of you that if it, everything is firing on all cylinders, it's an out-of-body experience. That's what you, you said. You know, like the, the greatest compliment I tell the band is that I don't say anything about your performance. It's when I notice something, it's usually because somebody screwed something up yeah. or that I screwed something up. The rest of it can be you for. On the other hand, all I ever cared about was just being the best I could be, whether it was for 50 or 50,000. Size didn't matter. We just wanted to be great. I wanted to play great. I wanted to sing great. I wanted to write great. That's really what mattered. Um, I'm fortunate enough that we get to do it at the highest, highest, highest level. And, and at this point, I still aspire to be a Rolling Stone. And an E Street band member. And, you know, the yeah. guys that have been doing it longer, bigger. And it's, you know, I just look at Jagger and go, wow. You know, it's just 80. the man. Dude, you're going to be there. Like it or not, you ain't going away. Jump by Jovi. I might, I might, I might crumble up and fade away, but I won't, you know, I won't have screwed it up. So, I mean, but I'd look at those guys as the bar. They're the bar. You know, it was nice with just the, the Springsteen, you talking about just you guys just take drives now. I mean, I was like, just, just yesterday. Like, just go ahead. yesterday, yesterday, two hours yesterday. He's home on a break and he got bored. He said, I'm on my way over. Let's go. And so we were driving through Asbury Park yesterday, but no one else will have known it. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. Just okay. yesterday, the two of us, it's what we do. We turn the radio off. Two old friends get a couple hours at a time and. We catch up on everything and and that's it. No one else is, you know, in the car ever. So we did it yesterday. Mr. Bon Jovi, you are a class act. The new album forever. The must see, that's a must listen. The must see, thank you, good night, the Bon Jovi story. I loved it. I, it really moved me. Uh, any age, you're going to relate to it. Uh, you're a gentleman, you're a scholar, and it's a privilege to be your friend, my friend. And you're my dear friend as well, Donnie. Thank you very much for all your support all these years. Let's, and I let's, am watching you when you're up way too early in the morning with your friends over there. I'm trying to try to say do the right thing. It's scary we time. I know we're, we're not going to get into politics today, but I, I you but it's we are in a uh, scary time. Scary Very time. Best. Yep. Everybody, thanks for watching. If you like it, hit that subscribe button, and we love having you here watching on brand. And just don't miss any future episodes. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.